Early in the morning, early in the morning, early in the morning. What's going on, the people? Them, it's your boy Cam Topical Juice, and we are back with another video for y'all. As you can see from the title, we're going to be talking about Noel Clark. Noel Clark has come back. He's crawled out the the mouse hole. He's crawled out the crevices of of the basement, right? To do the rounds on a couple podcasts, ZZ Mills and I can't remember what the other one's called, but big up them man as well. And he's attempting to kind of clear his name and say his version of events of what's happened. Now, if you, if you guys don't know, Noel Clark a couple of years ago got accused by 20 people of bullying, sexual assault, harassment, inappropriate stuff, manipulation, all these things. He got accused by 20 people-ish. And that wasn't, I say people because it wasn't just women, by the way. That's the, the key thing here, it was men as well. So after the allegations, his career kind of took a downward spiral as it should, as it naturally would. And he is now doing the rounds on people's podcasts and things like that to kind of clear his name. My brother, you might as well jump on my podcast as well if you're doing the rounds, bro. You know, I'll really, you know what I'm saying? I'll really put your your fire, you know what I'm saying? I'll put you, I'll put you to the fire for real. In fact, screw that, Adam Deacon. We follow each other on Instagram. Big up yourself, bro. You can jump on my platform, man. Jump on my platform, explain your side of events. Cause you know what I'm saying? We need to podcast wars and these things, you get it? <laughs> but yeah, man, like the video for me, hit the bell to be notified for me. Please press that subscribe button for me. And of course, this road to 50K, please help your boy get there. Now, first things first, right? I'm gonna start by telling you my opinion. I think that guy is guilty as sin. I believe he did 95% of the things he was accused of, 90% minimum, you understand? Now, if you choose to believe him, doesn't bother me. I don't care. If you believe, no, let, let, listen, let, let, me, let, me, let me just say that again. If you choose to believe Noel Clark, I don't care. Do you understand? That's you choosing to exercise your right to an opinion. So if you disagree with my opinion, I will tell you to suck your mother and argue with a mirror. I don't care. Don't try and convince me otherwise. I know what I know. I believe what I believe. Don't try and convince me otherwise. That's, I'm, just, I'm keeping that straight up. That's a disclaimer at the start of this video. I don't believe no Clark. I believe the victims, right? For four reasons. The first reason, there was 20 of them. Find one who's accused me. Find one who's accused my friends. Just one. Just one. You can search the whole internet, you can search the whole whatever, you won't find one. Because yeah, because it, it doesn't exist. So for you to have 20 different people, you must be mad if you think I don't believe that. Cool. Two, it wasn't just women, it was men. So yeah, all this, uh, all the bunch of um, misogynistic men, oh yeah, it's just women, they're just trying to tear him down, oh yeah, all these women are just liars. No, it wasn't just women, fam, it was men. Yeah, Adam Deacon being one of them and another couple. There's another two men, I think. I think there's about three or four men out of the 20. You understand? A good, a good 25%, basically, were men. It was across 20 years. Yeah? If someone's, if someone's colluding and trying to collaborate against you, you think, it would, you, you think you'd be able to find examples that go that date back to 2004? No, it would be usually within a few months, a few weeks. No, no, no. Over 20 years, people have said the same thing. And guys, if I'm being honest, I've forgotten the fourth reason right now. I'm having a mind blank. But there was four reasons why I don't believe the guy. Maybe it'll come back to me in a minute. But there are three key ones, yeah? It was both male and female. It was across a 20-year period, and it was 20-plus people, guys. Do you understand? There was another reason, but I can't really remember. Maybe it'll come back to me. Now, guys, I'm already sick of this whole narrative that, oh, it's just a successful black man. Oh, the system's trying to tear him down. Oh, it's the Matrix. It's the Matrix. Oh, open your eyes, bro. Come on. You think... My, my man, Noel Clark, is that special? You think the system's got it in for him? This specific black boy from London, like, come on. Guys, this is the exact same mentality that made people not want to believe that R. Kelly was pissing on teenagers, bro. The Boondocks did a, a perfect episode on it, fam. I wish the Boondocks, I wish we had an English version of the Boondocks. They would have covered Noel Clark. 100%. It's important that we hold our community accountable. Not everything is the not everything is the doing of the white man. Oh, it's the white system. Oh, it's systemic racism, bro. I'm the first person to, to talk about racism. I'm the first person to want to say, oh, the system's against us. But no, that alleviates all the blame and guilt from him. That misdirects all the accountability to something else, to a higher power. What beef would the system have against Noel Clark? There's way more successful black people than Noel Clark. You got athletes, you got flipping Oprah, you got Beyonce. What do you think they're gonna do with Noel Clark? Be, be serious. You understand? Yes, do I think systemic racism exists? Of course it does. Do I think there's a social imbalance and a social hierarchy in the West that has white people above black people? Yes, I do believe that. But I also believe that within that system, people can succeed, e.g. Noel Clark, 
And within the people that succeed, there are people that are wrong, straight wrong, wrongers, nonces, essays, violent people, whatever, murderers, whatever you want. There's people who are wrong who are successful, and I believe Noel Clark is wrong. So in this, in these podcasts, yeah, he basically tries to clear his name. He basically says everyone's capping. And the people that aren't capping, it was just taken out of context. He tries to do this reverse psychology stuff here, where he, he tries to give you a little bit of the truth, but not the whole truth, so it kind of appeases you. So he said, listen, some of those things I did say. I did say to that girl she had a nice ass. Times have changed. That wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't a malicious intent, rah, rah, rah. Now, no, I'll be honest with you, times have changed. I'm not going to lie to you, they have. You could get away with saying and doing a lot more things 20 years ago than you can now. Oh, that's a fact. Yeah, he ain't wrong for that. But I just don't believe him. I don't believe all of these things were taken out of context and um, just, just, just kind of not exactly true. You've made people go to therapy. You've made men cry. You, you've given people panic attacks. Do you understand? This is what people are saying. Witnesses, by the way. People's family members have witnessed what you've done to their family members. Do you understand that? He basically says, listen, people were just after me because I, I was successful. That's what he says in his podcast. He basically says, I was friends with these people. And ZZ even asked him, why would this person, you know, why would this key figure in this article lie on your name? And he basically says, listen, sometimes you're friends with people and you fall out of people. And once you fall out of people, people can just move certain ways. If you've got a whole group of people that don't like you and you know, you're successful, they don't like it, they're gonna band against you. He's basically saying it's a, it's a conspiracy because I'm successful. Bro, you are not the most successful black person in the world, let alone the UK, bro. Why, what, what beef do people have with you specifically besides the fact that you are alleged a bully and you are inappropriate with women? He goes the typical route of trying to hide behind the fact that, ah, oh, why did they not go to police? Why did, if I was so guilty, why did these people go to the media? It's very simple. Most people who can't get a conviction will go to the media because they want to discredit you. When it comes to SA and even things that are as serious as grape, yeah, you know, I can't say certain words because of the algorithm, even that is difficult to prove. Extremely difficult to prove without the person's DNA, you know, straight after it's happened and like maybe physical marks around your neck or your body or your legs or whatever, it's very difficult to prove SA, do you understand? So you're not really gonna be able to prove that 15 years ago, Noel Clark grabbed someone's ass or 15 years ago, no Clark exposed himself, or 15 years ago, or 10 years ago, No Clark sent a picture of a nude. Like it's, it's difficult to prove these things. So the next best thing you can do is discredit the man publicly, court of public opinion. And at the end of the day, when, when if one person, fam, if one person came out for me, TJ, Topical Juice, Cam, I would sue them. I would come out. I've got nothing to hide. I've respected women my entire life, even in my most toxic days. I've never laid hands on a woman, I've never forced myself on a woman, I've never done any of these things, it's not, it's not in me. So if one person came out, 19 more wouldn't follow, do you understand? <laughs> not like, I, would, I would straight up take that one to court and be like, you are lying, you're a liar. You're a liar and an actress, yeah, one of them ones. You are straight capping. And then he starts talking about Adam Deacon. Now Adam Deacon, I've said for years that I'm team Adam Deacon. I felt that he his voice got silenced a lot a few years ago. There's two sides to every story, and I do believe Noel's version of events are true as well. I believe they I believe they're both to blame, to be honest. But I do believe Adam's version of events as well. That you know whatever the reason for their fallout is, Noel would have done a lot of things in his power to ensure that Adam doesn't succeed. I believe that. I believe he would have done a lot of things in his power because he's bitter, because he was you know toxic, because he's got that narcissistic arrogance about him. He would have done a lot and I believe that would have negatively affected Adam. Knowles, from Noel's version of events, it's unfair, I can see both sides. Noel basically explains that he was prepared to help Adam when it came to another hood. And he was prepared to help him go through like Universal or something like that, it's a different, I don't really know all the companies, but he was, he was gonna go through his organization or his company, whatever the company that he has deals with and business with. But apparently he was taking kind of too long and it was a slow process so Adam basically said, F this, I need to, I need to eat, you know, I've got, I need to put food in my plate, I need to yam. So he signed another contract, basically, from Noel's point of view, behind Noel's back. If that's the case, then Adam obviously has to hold some accountability there as well. Allegedly, they were friends at the time. So if that's true, that's not really something that I would hope that my friend would do to me and go behind my back. Now, Noel Clark basically says that that's the origin of their falling out. So from that point on, for a few years, they didn't really see eye to eye and they weren't friends. Now, he then explains that it was Adam Deacon that was harassing Noel. He was the one that actually got the restraining out, um, restraining order out on Noel. You understand that he was harassing him. Like, he, he even says that he doesn't post pictures of his, of his kids on Insta all because of Adam, literally. 
Now, I don't know about all that. Yeah, I don't know about all that, but the fact that he actually got a restraining order successfully would show that there is probably some grounds for it to be in place. Obviously, he might have been belling off his line, he might have been emailing him, but at the end of the day, I actually don't know what that was about. Because everything's, everything's about perception and perspective. He could have been harassing Noel simply because of the fact that behind the scenes, Noel has been blackballing him. We don't know. So it's, it's not like, ah, oh, Adam Deacon's just mentally unstable and he just, oh, he's jealous of, of, of rah, rah, rah. it could be, it could be that, but I don't believe that. From a different perspective, yeah, he might have been emailing him, he might have been harassing him on the phone, but it could literally be to be like, yo, what the hell are you doing? I've heard this now, I've, I've heard this now. Why are, you, why are you stopping this now? Why are you stopping this person from working with me? Why are you making my life so difficult? We don't know the context. So while I, I see both sides, yeah, I'm not gonna just say that Adam was a, a, a pure victim. Listen, friends fall out and people, they go back and forth, but people do right and wrong. I'm not absolving Adam of you know, any responsibility at all, but I just believe his version of events. I, I do believe after they fell out for whatever reason, I do believe that Noel and his ego, he wouldn't have liked it. Especially the fact that Adam wasn't meant to use the name Anotherhood. He was meant to change the, the, the name. So it didn't kind of look like it was part of the whole kiddohood, adulthood collective, but he kept the name. So we know Noel's got an ego, man. He would have hated that. He would have made sure that Adam had no opportunities to succeed. He would have tried to blackball and shun him. He was he was big in the industry at the time. Also, before I finish, I've rated ZZ's thing for a while, and I, and I and I will continue to do so. But I don't really like the fact that she gave my man the platform to talk. Yeah, she's defending it. You know how ZZ is. She's he he kind of hella stuff, but even if she didn't believe it, she would still ride die on that hill. So she's talking about our oh, Twitter. You wouldn't say Gail King. You wouldn't say that to Louis Thoreau and all these things. I don't buy that. I think it's important for, for Noel to get his platform, to clear his name, I don't disagree with that. I just think you should have given a platform to maybe maybe use your pull and use your power to get hold of some of the people from the Guardian article perhaps, and maybe give them a voice before you give Noel. Maybe give Adam Deacon a voice before you give Noel Clark the voice, and then you give Noel Clark the opportunity to defend himself, you understand? But I'm not mad that he got the platform, I just kind of think that anyone who's able to get their voice heard will be able to convince people they're telling the truth, you understand? So the only way those victims were able to get their voice heard was through this one little Guardian article, right? But Noel was able to get his voice heard on a platform and then just did, and then hide behind legalities. Oh, that's one thing, before I, before I finish this video, that's one thing that was frustrating me. That's how you know someone's capping. So bearing in mind, so no, poli no, so no police has spoken to him, by the way. There is no charges against him. He's got no criminal investigation against him. He's been cleared. As, or, or not clear, no, no one really, no one charged him with anything because there wasn't a case to charge him with. You, could, you can't prove the things he's been accused of, you understand? So there was no case there. So why do you keep hiding behind legalities? When Zizi and, and this other brother from this other podcast here would ask him like a specific question about something that was like, you know, something maybe quite techie, he'd be like, oh, I can't really talk about that thing right now because of legal, like legal issues, I can't really talk. What legal issues are ongoing? Because last I checked in my research, he hasn't been accused of anything or like, he hasn't been charged of anything. Right, and he's he's dropped his case against the um against BAFTA and stuff. So maybe he's got a case against the Guardian, perhaps. Maybe that's still ongoing, even though allegedly there's been no movement on that case for like a year, something like that. Do you know what I'm saying? So what are you hiding behind legalities? What what if you've got legal things going on? You think a lawyer would expect you or advise you to go on a podcast? Do you know what I'm saying? If you if you're if you've got legalities and things that could compromise a legal case. Why are you going on podcasts? So I think it's BS. I'm calling it. I'm calling BS. Anytime he went, oh yeah, I can't really talk about certain things because of legal things. That's him capping. That's that's him swerving the answer. Hundred percent wholeheartedly. Now, guys, as I said, you can believe who you want. I don't care. I'm not trying to convince you. You understand? I I know what I know and I believe what I believe and I'm just telling you how I feel. I don't care. Yeah, if you disagree with me, don't. You don't. You, you can do it with humility. You can say, you know what, Cam, I appreciate your your viewpoint. I actually disagree because this, this, and this. Don't just come with a typical, ah, oh, uh, why would, how, how can he be guilty if he hasn't been charged? Oh, it's innocent and pro until proven guilty. Oh, oh, it's, it's the matrix against him, bro. Cut, stop all that. Stop all that. Come with some facts or something. Come with some sort of critical thinking or something. Or if not, just don't comment. Or if not, at best if you disagree with me and you hate it so much, fucking unsubscribe. I don't care. Yeah? So let me know your thoughts, man. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you lot in the next video. Peace.